Let's guess the rhythm on some EKG strips. Take a look at this rhythm. Can you name it? If you said ventricular tachycardia or VTAC, you got it. VTAC is known for its super fast rate, usually 100 to 250 beats per minute. The QRS complexes are wide. They're greater than 0.12 seconds, and they have a tombstone appearance, tall and broad. And there are no P waves. Now for treatment. If the patient is stable, think oxygen, amiodarone, and synchronized cardioversion. But if they're unstable, meaning unresponsive, hypotensive, or pulseless, we need to initiate CPR, defib, and administer epinephrine. Untreated VTAC can lead to VFib and potentially death. So early recognition is really important. All right, here's the next rhythm. Can you name it? This one is ventricular fibrillation or VFib. In VFib, the heart's electrical activity becomes completely chaotic. There is no organized rhythm, no P waves, and no QRS complexes. The rate is unknown because the ventricles are just twitching without pumping blood. When you see VFib, it's a full code. This rhythm is not compatible with life. The first thing you need to do is start CPR immediately and get the DFib ready. You can remember this by the memory trick, DFib the VFib. Then prepare to give epinephrine every three to five minutes, and if needed, add amiodarone. You may also need intubation for airway support. All right, here's the next rhythm. If you guessed atrial fibrillation or AFib, you're right. AFib is caused by chaotic electrical activity in the atria, causing disorganized fibrillating of the atria, which is why you'll see the classic irregularly irregular rhythm. In AFib, you won't see any clear P waves and the baseline looks messy. The R to R intervals are inconsistent and irregular, which is a major clue. Now for treatment. If the patient is stable, we focus on rate control. So think oxygen, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and we usually start anticoagulants to prevent clots. But if the patient is unstable with low blood pressure or symptoms, we administer oxygen if needed and do a synchronized cardioversion. All right, this is the next rhythm. This is normal sinus rhythm. The rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Each P wave is followed by a QRS complex and the rhythm is regular. This means the electrical signal is coming from the SA node and is firing through the heart's normal conduction pathway. No treatment is needed here unless the patient has other underlying issues. Let's take a look at another one. This is supraventricular tachycardia or SVT. Supra means above, meaning it comes from above the ventricles. The rate is usually over 150 beats per minute. You'll see a regular rhythm with a narrow QRS complex, but the P waves are often hidden because everything is moving so fast. All right, now for treatment. If the patient is stable, we start with vagal maneuvers. If that doesn't work, prepare to administer adenosine. But if the patient is unstable, we go straight to a synchronized cardioversion. All right, here's the next one. This rhythm is asystole. There's no electrical activity, no rate, no rhythm, no P waves, and no QRS complexes. It's a non-shockable rhythm, so we don't use the DFib in this case. The only thing that we do is high quality CPR and administer epinephrine. Okay, let's look at the next strip. This is normal sinus rhythm with premature ventricular contractions or PVCs. The underlying rhythm is regular, normal P waves, consistent PR intervals, and a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute, which tells us it's normal sinus rhythm. But what stands out are those early beats that are wide and bizarre looking. That's the PVCs. PVCs come from the ventricles, not the SA node, so they don't follow the typical conduction pathway. They are randomly interrupting the regular rhythm. Treatment really depends on the patient's symptoms. If the patient is stable, we usually just monitor. But if the patient is unstable, meaning maybe they feel palpitations or they're lightheaded, we want to treat the underlying cause. The PVCs themselves often don't need treatment unless they're frequent or causing issues. In those cases, beta blockers are considered. 
And now for the last rhythm. This is sinus bradycardia, a rhythm that comes from the SA node, but slower than normal. The heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, but the rhythm is still regular. And you'll see a P wave before every QRS complex. If the patient is asymptomatic, we typically don't treat it. Some people like athletes naturally have a lower heart rate, but if they're symptomatic, so think dizziness, hypotension, or chest pain, we treat it with atropine first, and if that doesn't work, we consider pacing. That's all for EKG rhythms. Happy studying, future nurses.